This article includes choices that were added in a console version. These choices result in dialogue changes that can lead to bad ends. Do you want to see these choices? Uh... Yeah... I kinda wanna see these kinds of choices that can lead to bad endings. Of course I would. But... This is entirely new, new to me. Like, what the fuck? Skip additional choices, show only content from PC version, prompt additional choices from console ver prompt cho what the fuck? No, <laughs> okay. Prompt choices and highlight correct answers. Uh, okay, this is something that I did not expect to have in this. Wait a minute. Like, for most of you Mineko, like 99, percent of you Mineko we had to deal with like a, a straight up linear story with no choices that can lead to bad endings and same case for Higurashi now you're now you're giving me this what what in the world am I supposed to choose here like skip additional choices show only content from PC version prompt additional choices I I mean do I want to go for highlight correct answers or should I go... I mean, I ain't curious about these bad endings. But that would mean that I would have to save and go back. Like, how far can these choices... go? Like... Are these choices that are, are, gonna ha are gonna have to make, like, at the beginning of this chapter and it will lead to bad endings, like, after 12 hours? Or after what? Like, hey... You know what? Middle of the road. Let's go. <laughs> I don't have time to sit here and and decide on something that I don't even know what I'm supposed to <laughs> decide. Uh... Nineteen eighty-five. <gasps> I had misread the time and ended up arriving too early. The scheduled board flipped with a series of clacks. My flight to Sapporo was still a bit early later on. I still had over an hour before boarding. Well, I might as well close my eyes for a bit on that bench over there. Then. I came here directly from work, so maybe the fatigue from that was making me sleepy. Finding a suitable bench, I put my luggage on the seat next to me and settled down. Okay, well, we are starting a new chapter right over here. Let's see if uh, if we're going to be starting with the good old times or we're going to we're going to be starting with another murder, just like in chapter three. Let's see how the tone is going to be set for this chapter. <sighs> Akasaka, I surely do not remember a person with that name before. I mean. Even if we are to start with the uh, with good times, or we're gonna start with murder, it's always gonna end in bad times. Actually, why the fuck? Like, now that I'm thinking about the choice that I made, like previously, like a like a minute ago, like we're always ending these chapters in bad endings. Endings. Like, now you're giving me choices. No, you're giving me the you're giving me the illusion of choice. You're trying to trick me here, Gugarashi. I sighed like an old man. I had hoped to stay young forever, but I had become splendidly middle aged. It's like a it's like a telltale game where you have the illusion of choice, you're making all these choices, but in the end it's all gonna end in the same. Like it's like it's gonna have like the same ending with few changes here and there. And uh, now you're doing this to Higurashi. Except Higurashi is much much better than those telltale games. Fight me on that one. Apparently, the rumor that even people in the later half of their 20s experienced a decline in their physical strength was not lying. Yeah, I've been mind numbly busy at work lately, so I rarely had any time to myself. Now tell me about it. This might have been the first time I've been able to enjoy a journey alone like this since I was a student. And the reason behind this trip was to meet with an old friend. It was a bit strange to call him old friend. In fact, I better call him a bad one. After retiring a couple of years ago, he moved to Sapporo 
his mother's hometown. His mother passed away soon after, and he was now peacefully enjoying his second lease on life. His name was Kuraudo Oishi. <gasps> Ooh. He was a former detective from the primary investigation unit at the station in Okinomiya, XX Prefecture. To be honest, the only direct contact we ever had didn't last more than three days. After that, we exchanged New Year's cards, but we never met again. So this would be the first time meeting him in... seven years. In other words, we met seven years ago. In 1978. There was something I just had to ask, to talk to him about concerning that time. To explain that, it was impossible not to recall the incident that happened back then. 1978. That kidnapping, the details and resolution of which were resigned to darkness. Also, it was impossible not to recall a certain mysterious girl. Who? Kidnapping? 1978? Mysterious girl? My name is Mamoru Akasaka. Akasaka? I get the feeling it's Akasaka. No way, that's... That's a horrible way of pronouncing that. It's like sounds like an English pronunciation of the name. Akasaka. It was a year that had been strangely hot, even though it was only June. You know, saying it like Akasaka, it was weird. Akasaka? I don't know. Early summer, 先生、さようなら。はい、さようなら。車に気をつけるんですよ。お友達の家に寄り道なんかしないように。明日の教科書の準備は必ず寝る前にしておくんですよ。クラブクラブクラブ。The lively sounds of children running towards the hallway. でさ、釣ってんだぜ。そんなの俺持ってるまよ。the unique high-pitched voice of youth. The energetic shrill of the cicadas went completely unheard by their ears. Children, returning home from school, split off one by one from their groups of friends as they went through intersections in the residential area. Even though there were several of them in a group as they left the school, as they got closer to their homes, their numbers dwindled. That's why the fewer friends you were walking home with act as an indicator that you are that much closer to your destination. He finally parted ways with his last friend. Uh, what are we doing over here? A van was parked at a bend in the road. The window was open, the sound of the radio leaking outside. It must have been the news or something. Tatame.道路交通法違反公務執行妨害で3名を逮捕しました。一連の雛水沢ダム建設反対をめぐる運動は先月の機動隊との流血事件を境に過激化の一途をたどっており、警察では過激な活動家による次の事件を警戒しています。先週も検
However, he was concerned that if he picked up, picked it up before it had even finished ringing once, whoever was on the other end of the line would think him a fairly cheap person. That's why he never, really, he normally never picked up the phone until the third ring. Even he thought it was a worthless habit. However, he's thinking that there isn't much meaning in waiting for just three rings. Wouldn't wait, waiting for five be all right? Was very much a reality. His mind filled with such trifling thoughts. He picked up the phone after the third ring had finished. Its reverb dampened by his action. Hi. Moshi moshi. Moshi moshi. Uh oh. He knew that sometimes due to a malfunction of the switchboard, calls didn't connect well. Yeah, they're probably talking about the kidnapping. Hmm. It could be that the boy was kidnapped. Vans. Like suspicious-looking men. Man, at those times it was best to hang up and let the person on the other end call again. Thinking that the moment he began to hang up on the phone. He sensed that he was definitely connected after all. He felt the presence of the person on the other end of the line, keeping silent. Moshi moshi. Like, more than likely those suspicious people from the van, like Nightingale and Skylark, probably kidnapped the, the boy, and now they're calling the par their parents for some ransom. <laughs> there was no way they didn't hear his question. What was the meaning of this? It wasn't like he didn't know that people could use silent calls to harass others. However, he'd never received a call like that until today. Maybe he was just lucky before, but he didn't believe that he would receive such a call on his phone. There were no direct calls to or from the silent. Everything had gone everything had to go through an operator. Therefore, there was absolutely no way the call would be connected unless it was verified there was somebody else on the other end of the line. That's why he didn't understand how to deal with this sound call. And instead settled into confusion. Anta Dare Daka Shiranainga Yoga Nainara Kiryo Mata Kakenao Ste Kudasai. Intending that to be a parting line, he made the slam down the receiver. It was at that moment the person on the other end spoke for the first time. No, I'm kidnapper. He couldn't help but be surprised by the extremely strange voice on the other end of the line. Was there a human alive who could speak with this hoarse and metallic voice? Eh, it's a voice changer, for sure. No, this was... This was a voice he had heard somewhere before. This is the kind of voice that was on those lowbrow documentaries that they used when they wanted to hide the identity of a speaker, wasn't it? Or like in the early 2000s, like when you'd use like a like a uh, voice program to change it like a chipmunk. And I remember like a time back in early high school or middle school or something. I was a young lad. I was using like some uh, voice changing program. I remember when I used to edit like uh, songs to make them sound like uh, chipmunks were, were singing them. And just like that. The voice he was hearing over the line was exactly like that. Anta, dare. He, Inukai, hesitated to answer. Unable to discern the intent of this suspicious phone call, he had a vague feeling that something was off. He thought about hanging up the phone and asking the operator who initiated the call. However, he forced himself to restrain that urge, and for the time being chose to state his name thus. So this, Inukai this. Nanorimashtayo. 
あなたの席の右側の一番下の引き出しを開けてみてください。The, the lower drawer? The lowest drawer to the right of the minister's chair. There was a lock on it. Not enough to function as a safe, but nevertheless, it was a drawer that contained some valuable things. That's why Inukai thought that the person wanted some of the important information contained within that drawer. Man, they, they know the location of this valuable item, whatever it is, that they want. So, they must have gained the like, intel about the house. About the Inukai's house. Or they were here. すまんが、開けるつもりはないよ。自分の名前も名乗れんやつの、言いなりになる言われはない。So, this is definitely something planned. It's not some... It's not some third-rate bandits that are trying to kidnap a son and, like, get money out of it. They actually had this planned as well. Like... They did their homework as well, it seems. Inukai didn't like following orders from the suspicious person one bit. However, he was concerned about what the man said about regretting it. So he decided to open the drawer. Now, see what some regular old fugs would do is like announce it that hey, we kidnapped your son. Now you do it, you do as we say, or else your son is getting killed or something like that. But no, they are doing this, and later they are gonna reveal that the son was kidnapped, or they are not even gonna reveal it at all. This must be some, this must be something even stranger than your regular kidnapping. <laughs> He took the small key he kept stowed in his wallet and unlocked the drawer. His hand stopped right before he opened it. What if there was a bomb inside? And it would explode if the drawer was open. Oh. Or that? That delusion took hold of him. He quelled an instinct and opened it. Oh, or rather, they put something there. So, yeah, they, somebody definitely was here in the house and put that whatever it is there. Oi! Oi! Mate! The call had already ended. That would not change no matter how much he yelled at it. Even still, Inukai, without realizing that, continued yelling into the receiver for a while. The drawer was still open. On top of the folders crammed into the drawer, it lay there. Toshiki Inukai, written in plain lettering on a great schooler's name tag, just lying there. Yeah. I guess so. That tells you well enough that he was kidnapped. Enshrined there, completely out of place, as if it were cowering. Do you remember, Yukie? This picture. This is where I first proposed to you. That brief moment before you nodded back. You probably wouldn't know just how much it seemed like an eternity to me. Yes, I would have never thought that amount of time could feel like an eternity. Okay, so is this entire chapter going to be done in 1985? Hmm. Well, you know... I vaguely remember at the very least uh, the mentioning of some kidnapping, like during the time of protest and such. Somebody was kidnapped, so this could very well be the moment that they were referencing. I get the feeling that it was Rena who said that. I don't know. 
to be quite honest, I don't remember. But either way, if this is gonna happen in 1985... They're telling me that I'm not... Like, if this entire chapter is gonna be done in 1985, it's gonna be like an origin story for the protest and such, and we're gonna learn some stuff about it. Are you telling me that I'm not gonna meet, like, Rena, Satoko, Rika, and uh, Mion? Or Shion? In this chapter, like, at all? Uh, am I not gonna spend, like, any time, like, at all with them? What the fuck? Okay, so... Well, I mean, if that's the case, if this entire chapter is gonna be just about 1985, then... Fuck me having, like, any good time, eh? Uh, how about some serious story, I guess? Blech. Whatever, let's just go through this. Compared to how long I had to wait for you to propose to me, it was... <laughs> now I'm here listening about some... Some stupid proposal that... That somebody's gonna do to Yuki or something like that. I don't fucking care about this. From the moment I met you until today. Compared to the time I've spent since I was born. It will only be a brief period, but... Like... I'm not gonna lie. Chapter 3 has bummed me out, like, quite a lot. Which, you know, it is to be expected. I mean, with the stories that I've been dealing with with Yumineko and Higurashi and such, eh, I mean, like, I've done, like, sad stories and, like, heavy murder mystery stories and such. Nonetheless, Chapter 3 has surely bummed me out, and I definitely could have used some... I, I definitely could have used uh, some time with... With the girls and such, spending some good times like yet again. And then I think I'm never gonna get to like anything, anything like that, like right now. Yeah. They were definitely precious. Beautiful days that deserve to be called an eternity. And that time continues even now. From now on, I wonder if you'll be a boy. Or maybe a girl. Either one is fine. Boy or girl. Either way, it's living proof that we love each other. I mean, this is seven years ago. Like, the girls, they're definitely older than seven years. So, I doubt that this is, like, the birth of any of, any, of, any of the girls. Like, I don't even want to talk Rika, so... What the fuck cares? If it's a boy, we'll name it after you, Mamoru. If it's a girl, we'll put the Yuki from my name in hers. Thinking about names is so fun that in the end we still haven't decided yet. There's still time to puzzle over it. Not that long of a time, actually. You see, Yuki, there's something I have to apologize for today. It's about your job. Sorry, it looks like an annoying bit of work has come up. In the worst case, I might not be able to be there for the delivery. Aw, oh, man. Well, that sucks. It's fine. You have a very important job. What you do protects the way we live. Compared to you, it's not. Please, go ahead. When they return, I'll be waiting here with our child. Thank you. Also, I'm sorry. Please don't apologize. If you feel guilty about it, then you can just atone. If I atone that much, no matter how much money I have, it won't be enough. Hehe. <laughs> It's a joke. No, go on. As I left the room, I bumped into an elderly man. It was Yuki's father. In words, my father-in-law. Otosan, jama suru ki wa nakatta kara na. Roka de matasete moratta yo. Kiki mimi o tateru tsumori wa nakatta ga kikoete shimatta.生きたまえ。雪絵は愛う娘だ。何があっても自分が君の枷になることを望む前。私はこれまで雪絵に様々な犠牲を強いてきました。出産という人生の節目にまで彼女に犠牲を強いることを味ます。君が本当にそう思う
君が仕事を投げ出して付き添ってくれるよりもそうした方がきっと幸恵も喜ぶだろうありがとうございます君がとても大切な仕事をしていることは私もよく知っている And you also gotta make that money. You gotta make that cheddar. 自分の仕事を誇りに思いなさい幸恵は君が見事難題を解決して凱旋するのを楽しみにしているはい I jumped into the taxi that was waiting outside Compared to the time when I first got here The numbers on the fare meter had grown considerably It seemed that the modest time you, Yuki and I had spent together wasn't so modest from an objective point of view. Mataste, sim yase. Yate kudasai. Ye ye. Dewa, maari mas yo. The taxi jerked as it changed gears to accelerate, soon burying the hospital my wife was in behind a throng of buildings. If it was to end up as a really troublesome ordeal, I probably wouldn't be returning for quite some time. To call a rookie like me, And on top of that, one who's off duty. It seemed that the section chief was calling for all hands on deck. The veteran upper brass gathering on an emergency basis happened occasionally. This was the first time, though, that I experienced everybody gathering together like this. Hmm. Actually, thinking back on that kidnapping thing that I mentioned, like, okay, somebody definitely mentioned that there was a kidnapping that happened during the protest and such. Wasn't it that at some point that I concluded or theorized or somebody was mentioning something among the lines that maybe it was one of the whole Joes that got kidnapped during that time? Either Satoko or Satoshi, maybe? I don't know. Whatever was happening, there was no doubt it was going to be something novel. Right when my wife was already ready to give birth. If I wanted to spend the time to curse my misfortunes, I'd be here all day. Even the verdant ginkgo trees lined on the street that always brightened my mood seemed to lack some of their usual luster. Eventually, the government office came into view. Briefly holding my breath, I let the feelings of tension course through my body once again. I had to remember the work I was doing was important, necessary, and difficult. I composed myself and sharpened my wit. Ready. The taxi stopped in front of the building. Alright, the Metropolitan Police Department. The blinds were usually closed when they needed to use the projector, or if the discussion was going to contain some particularly disturbing content. The blinds closed with a satisfying sound, darkening the interior of the room. Alright, might as well grab my popcorn. <laughs> like, is this about the protest? Immediately, the inside of the room was completely drained of the pleasant morning atmosphere, leaving behind only the cold illumination of the fluorescent light. As the supervisor ensured that everyone was present, he nodded to the section chief once again. Or it's about kidnapping, more than likely. With everybody on the edge of their seats, the chief stood up solemnly and began to give his report. It seemed that approximately 48 year, years, hours earlier, the Minister of Construction's grandson, who was also the son of one of his senior staff members, was kidnapped. The reason why it was phrased that way was because the person in question didn't admit it had happened. Here, the admitted the details that brought this incident to light. If you think about it a bit, that meant that before this incident happened, 
The minister's residence had been under surveillance for a week. I won't use the words spied upon. Of course, there wouldn't have been court approval for this, and it would have been very hard to explain to ordinary citizens. However, it was quite an effective method to catch wind of incidents like this before they got worse. I'd like for you to understand that dealing with these cases before they became a problem is the job of the Public Safety Division. なぜ警察を信用できないってんだから。いやもう末だね。て。犯人グループは誘拐初期に自分たちが大臣の生活をかなり高度に監視していることを警告し、その証拠を示したようです。ね、I Several of the higher ranking members who seem to have experience with this kind of thing let out deep sighs. I mean, the fact that a kidnapper had went through with that kind of call to make uh, the minister like open the drawer like that and then just end the, the phone call like right there, it kind of makes you feel like the kidnapper wants to make the minister realize on their own what the demand is without even saying it. In fact, there could be will be the possibility that once uh, this, this once this call, like, like the minister would already know what the deal is with this call without the, the kidnapper even making the demand in the first place. Like maybe there's some sort of revenge for something, and the minister, once they realize it, the situation, already knew what this was all about and what needed to be done without the kidnapper even having to say anything. Like there could be will be a case where the minister has done something like suspicious in the past that that he already realizes that okay this is definitely the result of that. Oh god, they actually do want that. They didn't even need to say anything. Like the minister already realizes the gravity of the situation. If their goal was to simply have their demands met for monetary gain, that would have been nice. However, if this was some politically motivated shakeup, things would get a lot more complicated. And to top it off, if uh, the minister knows the gravity of the situation, it's not necessarily that he doesn't trust the police. Maybe it can be that if he were to call the police, then that would have made things worse. So he's basically trapped. He's basically trapped by the kidnapper to do to do what needs to be done without the involvement of any people to be done in secret. Whether it's because of um, something bad that the minister did in the past or they're completely innocent, we don't know. But huh, nonetheless, the police knows though. We have discovered this in the first place somehow. So like these people in this room are definitely going to act whether the minister wants, wants us or not. After that, the supervisor continued on, tactfully explaining our course of action. If this incident were to become public, it was possible that the minister's political life would be over. I'll spare you the explanation of how the rest of the domini... I'll spare you the explanation of how the rest of the dominoes would fall, but in the end, supporting the diet would decline followed by a no confidence vote and a snap election. And they might even expand communist influences. Ugh. In other words, we wanted to handle this delicately. 
川崎と佐伯は大人宅子供宅の通話を24時間監視大臣の動向を探れ動きがあるたびに逐一報告せよ残る各職員は担当団体ごとに本件との関連を調査最近動きが不穏な特殊ラインは集中的にやれそれから外国勢力も水を漏らすな The commies and the reds? Man This is getting spicy I've experienced one or two unimicable situations before. And this, however, was the first time I've seen things get so hectic. Several sophisticated conversations were progressing without the involvement of a rookie like me. I didn't intend to be timid, but I couldn't hide my confusion at this unfamiliar situation. I snapped back to our alertness upon hearing my name called. Hi! Akasaka kun wa. 大臣に陳情してきた環境保護団体関連を調査してくれ。中でも、新聞でも騒ぎになってる、ひなみざダム建設反対の団体をよく調査すること。住民団体の仕業とは到底思えないが、すべての可能性を潰していかなくてはならない。わかりました。ひなみざダム反対か。直接現地へ行った方がいいだろう。現地県警で情報を取れかなり過激な団体らしく向こうの公安でもマークしてるらしいぞわかりました現地へ出向します奥さん出産控えてるんだってこんなタイミングで申し訳ないけど協力頼むよ時間がかけられないから人海戦術で総当たりで行くしかないんだええわかってます家内も自分の都合が私の仕事に触ることを嫌いますからすまんありがとうそれから川崎くん佐伯くん君たちの応援には I didn't want to take a business trip when my wife was about to give birth Alright well let me think about this a little bit and think about the investigation of theories slash ideas that I brought up Like last times. So, clearly, this has something to do with a protest and what is happening in Hinamazawa. So, I get a feeling that the kidnappers did this、uh, for the sake of possibly stopping whatever's happening in Hinamazawa. Maybe, maybe we're going back to that discussion of how there could be somebody, either Mio Takano or Tomitake, or maybe some other people, who are thinking that the government. Like the minister, for example, is at fault for whatever is happening、uh, in Hinazoa about the spread of the disease that I've been talking about and theorizing about. So they are kidnapping the minister's grandson in order to, to advance the plan in trying to stop this disease and stop the chaos that is happening in Hinazoa. So it can very、well, well be something about that. Even if I was a little busy, as long as I was in Tokyo, I could head to the hospital right away. On a side note, though, that would be difficult. Even so, I knew the work I was doing was important, and fully understood that I was in no position to be selfish. I had to make it up to my wife for having to be away at such an important time. My wife, Yukie, will probably forgive me with a smile. The only thing she could hate doing would be holding me back. My male ego, though, at least w i s h she would have tried to stop me. Sorry, Yuki. I don't mind if you always complain to our child that their father couldn't come to the hospital when they were born because they was too busy with work. That's fine. The next day, I took the bullet train to Nagoya, and from there, transferred to the train to XX Prefecture. I mean, as long as you're a good father during like, childhood and in raising your child, Like, the child is not even gonna, gonna give a fuck if, if you were not there during birth. Getting to my destination by land took several hours. If I was traveling by air, in that amount of time I could probably get as far as Hong Kong. XX Prefecture was by no means close. I never sat in first class except for work, but whenever I did, the seat seemed stiff. 
closing my eyes. I mentally reviewed documents I read yesterday. In the group under investigation. The Onigafuchi Guardians. Ooh. They were a group of residents opposed to the development proposed under the Hinozawa Dam project. Yep. The local protests were quite heated and were getting more radicalized. Even limited to what was written in the newspapers, there was bloodshed that occurred during a clash with the riot police. Interference with the dam construction. Too many to count. The number of petitions, sit-ins, and direct appeals to the relevant organizations were innumerable. As an extension of that, there was a direct appeal to the Minister of Construction the other day. Wait a fucking minute. Wait, 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 hold on a second. I feel like I suddenly remember, like, uh, I feel like I suddenly recognize this voice actor. Is that Daisuke Ono? Is that you, Balor? <laughs> what the fuck? The land that they lived on was going to be submerged, so it was no wonder they would go into a frenzy over it. Even given that, though, can they really be capable of doing something like kidnapping the Minister of Construction's grandson in order to halt the project? The project? From my take on it, I had serious doubts. And this kidnapping plot was extremely sophisticated, and complicated enough that it was believed there was some political backing. This wasn't something that could be pulled out by some group of local protesters. Well, just like the chief said, the plan was to eliminate all possibilities. While I'm in the XX police's reference from taking my time investigating, the higher-ups in Tokyo would probably solve the case. Uh, without my involvement, Tori. Even if that was true, I can regret being away from Tokyo while my wife was ready to give birth. And this was work. There was really nothing that I could do. Ding dong. The announcement that we would be arriving at our destination soon snapped me back to wakefulness. Onigafuchi Shishu Dome. Deska. Eh, Jimoto dewa kanari niniwase teiru yo desu. The Prefectural Public Safety Department already had the documents and a cup of tea ready and waiting for me. The stack of papers they had prepared for me in the document room was by no means thin. Violent organizations usually indicate ones that enforce their own ideology without regards to the democratic process. Breaking that down, Many of those organizations held extreme left revolutionary ideologies. Considering that, I couldn't help but be surprised that a citizen's group end up going this far. Radical citizens' movements happen occasionally. It seemed, however, that this group was nothing as trifling as death. It seemed that I would have to reconsider exactly what this Ogunafuchi Guardians was. Okay, now you're sounding a little bit different there. Is this Daisuke Ono? Like, last time when he talked it sounded like him, was it just me? The kidnapping of the minister's grandson was classified. That meant, of course, I couldn't tell the XX prefectural department about it either. I skimmed over the list of criminal records related to Onika Fuji Guardians, recording the documents. The contents were all violent, 
not giving me the barest hint of a feeling that these people were trying to uphold the law. The chief opened up a manila envelope, fished out several unorganized sheets and spread them out on the desk. Okay, well, let's see. Raids. Of course, what really happened first were things like demonstrations, sit-ins, and de distribution of pamphlets. Lively but democratic forms of protests. However, then the demonstrators and police clashed, which started a riot, leading to numerous injuries and arrests. It was from then on that the Onigafuchi Guardians, like their name implies, began to take a more demonic form of resistance. You might as well label the entire map of Hinamizawa village around the damp construction site enemy territory. No matter how alert the police were, the locals would just show them exactly how easy it was to sneak around. ほら、この辺りからだいぶヒートアップしてるのがお分かりになります。事務所の方か、建設重機の破壊工作。破壊。まさか爆弾でも。いや、まさか。no. They used barrels, as far as I remember. I feel like um, one of the details that I remember was something that had to do with the barrels. They used those for explosions. Yeah, there you go. Gas tanks, like using sugar cubes on gas tanks slash barrels and such. Even in Japan, it seemed there had been people doing that to the vehicles of occupying forces right after the war. Compared to the misdemeanors like breaking windows, he was extremely violent and aggressive. He used the words quiet it down, but I was still smack dab in the middle of the list of crimes. で、After that, there was silence. What was being described to me was a guerrilla war fought in the jungle. Threats and violence against the workers. Harsh words and harsher rocks were thrown. かなりの国葬がされているのに、逮捕者があまり出ていませんね。それはそうです。第一、目撃者なんかいないんですから。それどころか、現行犯だったにしたってアリバイがポンポンポンとできちゃうんです。うん。それはどういうことですか。うん。例えばですね、あなたが平見沢で歩いていて、ある男にナイフで刺されたとします。あなたは相手をよく覚えていて
何しろ物的証拠はない上犯人を隠匿する証言だけは後から後から増えていく検察も書類送検には二の足を踏むわけです殺人ならいざ知らず透析で額を切った殴られてあざができた程度だと仮に犯人を特定できたとしても嫌疑不十分で送検されないことがほとんどです Can't say that I'm surprised by this kind of detail that you are describing. There very well can be a level of forging coming from the entirety of the village, from a lot of people. I mean, we had that whole discussion about how k e i c h i s murder in Chapter 3 could very well have been、um, hidden by the girls. Or. Maybe even more than just the girls. Even if they could figure out who it is, they're unable to obtain enough circumstantial evidence through, the, through due process. The villagers were all extremely well informed about this, and so the militia's vicious and tenacious personal attacks continued. The police are not going to be able to do it. The police are not going to be able to do it. The p o l i c 審査員たちがみんな厄介ごとに巻き込まれたくないと思っているからですよ。ひなみざわ関係のトラブルには首を突っ込みたがらないんです。The inquest committee is comprised of a random selection of local residents. In the event the prosecutor fails to get a conviction, they have the power to order a retrial. They have the power to order a retrial. It's a system designed to assert the will of the people and the actions of expert prosecutors in a legal world. In this case, however, being composed of local residents has backfired. Hmm. What 政治的なバックボーンが存在するということですかいえそういうのとは少し違うというかまあその怖がられていると思ってくださいこの辺りは口では少し説明しにくいんですああそうだわかりやすいのがありました Wiping his forehead with a handkerchief He opened a file labeled as a list of number, members of the Onigafuchi Guardians. Onigafuchi s h i s h u d o m e no s e r u k n i w a d e s n e Kinlin no Machimachi ni, Sio e k o r i o k o m o t s n i n y a n g a Tata o r i m a s h e Konohen o g o r a n i t a t a k i m a s k a I looked. What I saw startled me. Prefectural and municipal assembly members, staff members of the Chamber of Commerce, an executive of Business Association. An executive of a town council association and a PTA liaison. There were more than a few people with a lot of say, both locally and in the neighboring regions. In this case, Hinamiza and Dam Hantai Undo are all the same. If you have a lot of people who are in the same way, they will not be able to do it. If you have a lot of people who are in the same way, they will not be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, we know a good example of that in the form of the Snozakis. Neon has a lot of relatives that work like everywhere in Hinamizo. <laughs> like, for the Snozakis to learn something from the citizens, it is like cutting butter with a knife. The Snozakis are not the only ones in the world. 報復がされないように何らかの措置が取られているはずでは一応非公開でプライバシーは守られてますがねそれを管理してるのは沖ノ宮市役所の人間つまり地元の人間なんです守秘義務があるとはいえやはり人間のつながりは分かりませんからね日南沢の人間はそのあたりのつながりが When you consider all the obligations and duties people have to the region, 
The web of information thereby formed is nothing to scoff at. It's not uncommon for housewives in the neighborhood to know which kid from which house is what grade and which school, what subjects they are good at and what vegetables they hate, among other things. それにほら、ひなみざわと知恵の深い暴力団組織がありましてね。これが今回の騒動に全面バックアップしてるらしいんです。こちらが出てくるのが一番聞いてるみたいですね。暴力団。ダムの建設反対で住民と一致。どういう
I don't know, maybe they did like completely different kidnappings and such. Like, who knows, maybe there is a completely separate kidnapping that is happening in Hamazawa that is completely different from the from the minister's grandson. I guess we shall see. Like, so far the chief has has said nothing about any particular kidnappings. In Hinozoa, that is. Well, that will make sense. To hold progress on the dam, they raided the construction site, destroying heavy machinery, and lighting the construction office on fire. If they didn't have any qualms about doing that, threats and violence against people related to them would probably be no problem. But that was it. Even your everyday hoodlum could use threats and violence. However, in this time, it was the kidnapping of the minister's grandson, an abnormally high level crime. Not only was pulling off the kidnapping difficult in the first place, but so was maneuvering to have the minister surrender to their demands merely. There was no way this was the work of amateurs. Yep. Did these people have the power to enact this large of a crime? That was the heart of the matter. Was the only Hafuchi Guardians an organization capable of pulling this off? In order to ask that question, once again, I chose the most basic method. Tatoeba. There's no way they could pull off something that big. That was the answer I most hoped for. If it was the answer, my work was as good as halfway done. I might be able to get back in time for my wife to give birth. Oh my god. <laughs> this is like the fifth time that you've been talking about it. Like, I get it, dude. That was how it was supposed to be. Like, in the span of an hour, the chief, without a hint of hesitation, plucked. Sorry, Yukiya. It seemed like it might work wouldn't end so simply after all. Oh, Akasaka-kun. Gokuro-san.担当地域での情報収集はどうですか順調です。これから現地警察の公安と接触できることになりましたので、現地へ向かう予定です。東京の調査の方はどうですか他の職員も順調に調査を進めているよ。でも調べる団体が星の数だからね。そんなに悠長
although Okinomiya's police station being on the front lines of the damn conflict, nor the numerous incidents that I heard about at the prefectural headquarters. The clerk, who forgot that I was here for a parking violation at first glance, after fumbling with the unfamiliar extension number, told the person on the line they had a visitor. <laughs> I would hesitate to call where we were a conference room, as it was very small and cluttered. The cramped space was packed with lockers. I had the impression that it was more of a change room that doubled as one for smoking. Listening to his crude chortles, I didn't get much of a feeling that Hondaya, who was set at the local public safety division, was much of an intellectual. But I knew that, in exchange, he had both experience and absolute confidence in instincts. <laughs> I mean, you know, thinking back, like, it's no surprise to think that voice actors from Mineko would, would voice act in Higurashi as well. Like, it would be no surprise that, that some vo voice actors would share between works like these. I mean, Miki Ito is obviously voicing uh, Mio Takano and such. You know, Mio Ta uh, <laughs> Miki Ito is surely one that you would recognize like on the spot. You know, like one of the characters from uh, uh, Cardcaptor Sakura is voiced by, um, by Miki Ito. I surely recognize them <laughs> when they were yelling and such. Uh, like, rest assured, whenever uh, Miki Ito yells, you're definitely gonna recognize them. <laughs> like, uh, the character was like the mom of Tomoyo in Cardcaptor Sakura. I definitely recognize that voice. Boatai?剣系の暴力団対策本部ですか?うちじゃ、鬼が淵死守の連中は暴力団の延長に位置づけてますんでね。<laughs> they said at the prefectural office too that the Onigafuchi Guardians was linked to the local mob. If I recall correctly, the adopted son of somebody influential was a lieutenant in that gang. I think they mentioned that the adopted son of somebody influential was a lieutenant in that gang. それは逆。全然逆ですよ。暴力団の活動があって、それに住民団体が大義名分みたいにくっついていると、そういう風に考えてください。逆逆。本来 <laughs> was just about rolling with laughter. This was slightly different than the info given to me at the prefectural office. But somebody embedded locally would be more knowledgeable. While we were talking, occasionally some people who seemed to be detectives would come in and change. One of those individuals, noticing Honda's guffaws, came up, up to us. Is it you, Oishi? Hi, Oishi. Yeah, I had a feeling. I can sense, like, the air conditioning air, like, like from a mile away. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense that we would eventually meet uh, Oishi in here. Kochira, Harubar, Tokyo no Kesho, Karaomi, and Nata, Akasaka Cave. 
also new song here. Jazzy. Cave だなんて。まだまだ新米です。赤坂です。よろしくお願いします。ういういしいのがいいですね。採用は今年ですか。うんふんふんふん。I can't help but think I was being ridiculed, so I only responded with a forced smile. I could tell that this new person was like Hon Daya, the type who had confidence in their instincts and experience. I really didn't like those types of people. Akasaka san ni mo go shoukai shimas. Kuchira wa Keijibu no Oishi kun. Akasaka san ga o t o y a w a s e no Esugo no ken nara kare ga kuwashii desu. Esugo? Sono zaki no S. Hmm. Esugo ってのはですね園崎家が関連している件を示すまあ暗号みたいなもんなんです。園崎 ?Come to think of it, I remembered when I was poring over the documents at headquarters. There were quite a few people with the last name 園崎 popping up. Yep, a lot of people. 確か、園崎氏は鬼ヶ淵市主同盟の役員でしたね。確か、会計だったと思います。The two of them were surprised when I read off what post that Sonazaki held. After a moment, both of them erupted into laughter. Treasurer? Akasaka san de shtake? Ha 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 <laughs> 暗記というほどではありませんが一応鬼ヶ淵市主同盟のカンブリストは一読しました<笑>じゃあ会長と副会長は会長は現ひなみ沢村村長の君吉喜一郎氏副会長は町会神社部長の古出氏 The priest was a vice president? 会計がその崎を漁して、会計監査は牧野氏。オーリオ。ねえ。And the auditor is 牧野。教頭部長が君を知るをし、広報部長がその崎貞夫氏。はははは。赤坂さん、あなたなかなかやりますね。給料安いけど、うちに来ませんうちに一番必要で一番いないタイプですよ。<笑>で、ちなみに、その崎貞夫は青年部長なんです。惜しいですね。広報部長はその崎忠敬。Feeling like I wasn't being complimented at all. I started settling into an uncomfortable mood. However, I was becoming more and more aware that I was the weakest link in this investigation. So I just had to bear with it. I didn't mean for that feeling to show up on my face, but the crafty detectives didn't let that slip by. Ha 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 ha
my personal safety was at risk. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We're gonna meet with uh, Rena, Rika, Satoko, and Mion in baby forms. They're gonna be even younger. They're gonna be even more adorable. <gasps> yes. Now I'm even more motivated to go and uh, and investigate him in Hinamazawa. If my personal info was leaked, it would be hard to imagine that I'd be in danger, whether on the job or not. Thinking that, I felt a little nervous. Didn't you uh cowboy no haya discarane? What I should show you to Koro Miraru to Tabun Iruiru Anatano Shimotoni Saskairu to my masu. Skinami desgane, poizo minitsketa with the good asai. Uh okay. Why she handed me an incredibly suspicious disguise comprised of a baseball cap, sunglasses and a mask. Eh, no worries. I do have myself like my scarf to hide my face for the most of it. And I have some sunglasses. Actually, you know what? I do have like um, some hair to put on as well. Like, if I were to put my afro like right over here, they are not even suspected I'm a skeleton like at all. <laughs> I didn't want to get all hot and stuffy. But what she's wanting was probably right on the money. Considering that, I put them on with appreciation. I looked so suspicious that I she had to smile brightly. どこまで話しましたかね？えっと、御三家という旧家が村を支配しているというところまでです。The Guardians was the same as the village of Inazawa itself, meaning. There was a direct correlation between being an executive in the Alliance and being a leader in the village, as Hondaya had told me a short time ago. Yeah. You know, I think I'm gonna use this disguise. Because, you know, we've met uh, the kids in present time. I get a feeling that uh, if we were to meet them in like, the past, some weird time-related bullshit is gonna happen. Like one of those back-in-the-future kind of movies. You know, that technically doesn't ever happen in my case, but whatever. Just finding myself some excuse to use my afro right over here. I never used it. <laughs> if the village was ruled by three ancient families, it would mean that Onigafuchi Guardians was ruled by those same three families. What did you write in the report? Or what did you write in the leader of the Shishu Domain? The documents I was using were classified. If I responded to Weishi's question, it'd be a breach of security. However, most likely, this man I judged was more well versed in this situation than any of the documents of the prefectural police department. So I decided to answer him. Weishi, upon hearing that, let out a small chuckle. For him to ask like that, and to laugh at the answer as it was recorded in the documents, meant that wasn't the case in reality. では、君吉氏以外の影の人物がいるということですね。県警の持つ、いや、一般的な情報とは異なり。ふふふ。君吉の爺さんなんてただのお飾りですよ。そもそもこの村じゃ。<laughs> Sonchonante <laughs> I did question that before, like, hey, Kimiyoshi is the mayor. Although the Sonozaki surely have more influence, it seems. Hmm. All of a sudden, the funk, the car suddenly lurched. The paved road had given way to a gravel one. At the same time, the scenery outside the window changed. The Hinamazawa Dam project must be withdrawn. Overthrow the shameless puppet of a governor! The dam will submerge the natural beauty of Hinamazawa. 
Protect the village from the new unethical dam. Fear the wrath of Kuyashira Sama's curse. Demolish the dam. Those involved must go away. The construction office must respond. The construction office manager must negotiate with us. Signs and banners crowded the roadside. Even reading the brush scrawled words was daunting. It was as though where the road just changed was a border with a different country. At the moment, I was startled by the car suddenly breaking. Looking ahead, a barricade had been erected. About five or six protesters, wearing masks and helmets to hide their faces, were blocking the road, yelling at us angrily to stop. This Oh boy. Huh? <laughs> snorted as he rolled down the window and leaned out. Oi, oi, oi! Andra dame da yo konna toko de michi o sai ja! As Oishi glared at them with a malicious laugh, they visibly faltered. Michi, akete kudasai na? Sori ja tore nai de sha. <laughs> Who would have thought it was Oishi's car? That panicked thought seemed to make them lose their presence of mind. お、石刑事の車と分かってれば、こんなご無礼はしなかったんですがね。お、石刑事。いつもの車はどうされました。車検ですか。そんなところです。台車ってのはどうにも馴染みませんね。<laughs> Judging from their brief conversation, I could guess that they were familiar with this license plate of the car Oishi normally used. In other words, if they knew the car belonged to the police, they would have hidden the barricade. What they were doing was obviously obstruction of traffic. A blatant crime. The man glared at me menacingly. Wearing a mask and sunglasses made me look particularly dubious. Eh, don't mind us. We're just a bunch of rock stars that are just hiding from the public. Would not showing my face get me into some unnecessary trouble? I turned to Wish to see what I should do. I mean, you know how kids are these days with their music and such. If they were to find out that a rock star such as myself is here, they're gonna, they're gonna chase me like a bunch of dogs. I have to keep my face hidden, you know. まだまだ新米でシャイなんですからね。不審な輩じゃないか確認しようってだけです。最近の雛見さんは物騒ですからね。あんたのうち鏡歪んでるのと違います。あんたのその面の方がよっぽど不審ですよ。The man and Oishi continued to talk like that, fading smiles at one another. However, from the beginning to the end, I couldn't get over the feeling I was sitting on a powder keg. ゴミの報道記者料まだ減らないんですか。オタクたちも本当に朝晩大変ですね。警察の方にもご理解とご協力をいただけて助かりますよ。during that conversation, the barricade was moved, leaving a gap wide enough for a single car to get through. Oishi lightly honked the horn once, and began to roll the car forward. I could see the man's antagonistic glares at the back of the car in a rearview mirror. What?なんですか、さっきのは。勝手に行動を封殺するなんて。もちろん、犯罪ですよ。目くじら立てても始まりませんがね。ふふふふ。連中の主張じゃですね。そんなに不法投棄をするトラックが出没するっていうんです。それを封じ込めるために不審者令を検問してるって話だそうで。不法投棄。参拝を勝手に捨てようとする悪徳業者のことですか。警察
まあ参拝なんて話はどうせ自演だからどうでもいいんですがね